Hi everyone, what's up? Joshua here with Alternative Brewing. Today is an in-depth guide in how to make coffee using the Bellman CX25P espresso and steamer. Now this is by far one of our best selling products. For the fact that it is a portable coffee brewer capable of making espresso strength coffee and steaming cafe quality milk within the same unit. And it's this combination of capabilities that make it a super unique design. That in that particular convenience aspect also brings with it a little bit of a meticulous operation of the Bellman when it comes to actually brewing good coffee with it. That might put people off to begin with, but I think if you are more about good coffee and enjoy drinking it anywhere, then the Bellman is sure to please. And speaking of pleasing, right now I need you to smash that like button as it does please the YouTube algorithm and we'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's jump straight back into the video. Now, as mentioned before, this is a very popular brewer. And for that reason, we get asked loads of questions about the Bellman Espresso and Steamer. So throughout this video, I'm gonna hopefully answer most of your questions, but also give you some tools to use with the Bellman in order for you to brew coffee that you prefer to drink, because we all know coffee is a very personal experience. Now, I've already posted a video review of the Bellman, and here I go through the parts, a basic procedure, and some milk steaming. So check that video out if you haven't, as it will be a good way to speed things up here, as I won't be going over the Bellman like a product review, but getting into the nitty gritty and some Q&A. Now, there's also some timestamps in the comments section down below if you prefer to jump to a certain point in the video that you wanna know first. But let's jump straight into some of those pressing questions first up. Is it necessary to use paper filters when brewing with the Bellman? No, you do not have to be using paper filters at all when you brew with the Bellman. And although you get 10 in the box when you buy a Bellman, once you run out of these, you can get more from the link up above, or you can continue to use the Bellman completely without paper filters. But in using them, I have found it helps marginally increase the smoothness and the cleanliness of the coffee's flavor, but it's not actively filtering out the grinds from your brew. And it's this stainless steel filter that's in the lid that does a good job of that. So, next question. Does the Bellman tamper help in any way when brewing with the Bellman? Yes, it does help, absolutely. It compresses the coffee grounds in this basket and allows for a slower and more even brew. I will say you do need to tamp with the Bellman, but you can also just get away with this spacer part that comes along with the Bellman itself. It does an all right job at tamping and compressing those grounds, though it can be a little bit messy with this edge inside here. It does an all right job, but the tamper does a better job. And you can find this in this link up above. Next question. Can you use the Bellman on all stovetops as well as placing it on a fire? Yes and no. See, the Bellman will work just perfectly well on gas, ceramic, and electric stovetops, as well as many induction stovetops, including the one that I have right here, due to it being made from 304 grade stainless steel. But we have discovered there are some induction stovetops out there whose own heat induction system does not pick up on the base of the Bellman because of its magnetic resistance being too weak for the stovetop systems. And it's at this point that I would probably recommend getting something like a Bialetti induction plate. And this works as an intermediary between the hot plate and the brewer. It does slow things down a little bit with heat transfer and that, but at least then you can use your Bellman and you can get one of these from this link up above. As for placing it directly on the coals of a fire, well, I'd recommend against that altogether. As the handle, this might come in contact with the flame and quite possibly melt. Not only this, but it is a pressurized container and open fires reach of upwards of 600 degrees Celsius. So I would avoid this altogether due to safety reasons. Next question. Do you have to refill the Bellman between brewing coffee and steaming milk? No, the design of the Bellman ensures you do not have to refill it between brewing and steaming. By placing water above the three mark inside the unit, the stem of the coffee basket reaches down into the water itself at the bottom of the Bellman. And then it will be able to suck water up under pressure and then begin brewing the coffee in the basket. If and when the water falls below the stem of the brew basket, then it's very difficult to get water to make that leap into the stem unless you're at really high pressures. So you're left with around 300 mils of water to create steam with. And for what it's worth, that's more than enough water that's under pressure to create steam for almost 10 minutes straight or more. 
So that should answer that question. Now, the last question to answer before we move on, is it normal to find coffee in the bottom of the Bellman when I open it up after brewing? Yes, it is perfectly normal, and you might even find a little bit of grinds settling to the bottom as well. See, the Bellman forces water up into the ground coffee under pressure, and that coffee will swell and soak up almost two times its own weight in water. And if that water is kept up there during brewing and under pressure, when the Bellman then cools and that pressure is released, the water has to go somewhere from the grounds, and it naturally falls back down into this bottom chamber again and it doesn't take all that much coffee to turn the water at the bottom nice and brown, like coffee. It doesn't interact with the steaming process at all though. So that's Q&A out of the way with plenty more answers to come. Let's take a look now at the right amount of ground coffee to water we should be using with the Bellman. So there's generally three different amounts of coffee you can use within the filter basket. It's gonna be a low dose, a medium dose, and a full dose and the spacer is what allows you to use less than a full dose. So either a low or a medium dose is essentially underfilling the basket and then the spacer acts as a fake ceiling for the brew basket. Now in my experiences with dosing, you can get 15 grams as your low dose, 25 grams as your medium dose, and around 45 grams as your full dose. But if you're using the Bellman Tamp along with this, then you can increase each dose by about five or so grams when you're compressing it down with the Tamp. In adding water, always add at least up to the three mark, which is around 150 mils of brewed coffee later on. As mentioned before, this is important to allow the stem of the brew basket to reach down into the water itself. Now, if you do intend on making more than two shots of coffee with the Bellman, then I would go above the six mark, which is around 300 mils. But very rarely would I use the nine mark or 450 mils, as this does tend to be too much water for the maximum amount of coffee you can actually use in the coffee basket, which is around 60 grams. And this leads us to a junction in how to best brew the coffee you can enjoy with the Bellman unit. And it has everything to do with the magical brew ratio. So if you enjoy your coffee strong and rich, and very much like an espresso coffee, where it only takes a small 40 ml espresso shot to flavor a cup of coffee, then the ratio of coffee to water you'd be aiming for is a one to two. This is a universal espresso brew ratio. But what this means is, in using the Bellman unit, if you place 15 grams of ground coffee in the basket and want a tasty espresso-like shot, you need to be aiming for around 30 mils of coffee brewed out of it. Any more than this and the coffee will no longer be close to an espresso shot in any way. And this will apply basically to any dose you place in the Bellman. So for espresso brewing, I would be aiming for 50 grams out from 25 grams of coffee and 100 grams out from 50 grams of ground coffee. And the key being maintain that espresso brew ratio if you want it to taste nice and strong. Now, if using a lower dose around the 15 grams, I would also consider grinding finer than normal. For brewing on the Bellman in any case, anything like an espresso-like grind is what we wanna use if we wanna get closer to those best results of espresso-like brewing. Now, there's not too much more you have to do to extend that typical one to two brew ratio out a little bit to perhaps get a one to three ratio. And you'll find you'll get more brewed coffee out without compromising the overall flavor and the strength of the coffee. So with the same amount of doses, you would get 45, 75, and 150 grams of coffee out, which is more liquid per dose, right? But if we took that example of the 150 grams of brewed coffee, which we received from 50 grams of coffee, it's not all that far away from the one to two brew ratio, and you could comfortably split the 150 grams into three separate cups to make three very decent cups of coffee from them. And if we increase that again to a brew ratio of a one to four, the amount of coffee we get out, it will be a little bit weaker, and we may end up having to use more brewed coffee per cup in order to achieve a strong flavor or an equally good coffee, but for a not strong flavor, you can easily make upwards of four cups of coffee from 50 grams of ground coffee. And you can see now how scaling on the Bellman can happen. Everything though does have its limits. Certainly at a brew ratio of one to four, we've moved away from that espresso strength of brewing and anything above a one to four or a one to five brew ratio and upwards is more similar to a mocha pot style of brew which is relatively easy to achieve on the Bellman and will increase the amount of cups of coffee you can brew at one time. 
So there are a few ways to brew on the Bellman, but I'm going to focus on the espresso brew ratios for now and then touch on the mocha pot brewing a little bit later on. And lastly, before we start looking at the pressure and heat management during brewing, there are two reasonably common concerns when brewing on the Bellman. The first being that crema that's created on the coffee. Now, crema itself is not the hallmark of a good espresso or a good tasting coffee. It's essentially just the cover of the book. And we can't really assess the coffee bad if it simply does not have any crema at all. Crema on its own tastes quite bitter, and it might add that complexity to the coffee's flavor, which might be a great balance, but it's not the be all and end all of a quality cup. The Bellman is quite capable of creating a light and foamy crema, but this generally dissipates quite quickly. And in the way in which you would brew a great crema with the Bellman does work counterintuitively to brewing a good flavored coffee on the Bellman. Now, it's obvious it's not an actual espresso machine with an electric pump and nine bars of pressure. But in terms of creating a good crema, you can use freshly roasted coffee, ground nice and fine, and then brewed at a higher than normal pressure, and this might achieve a good crema. But I would say, don't be put off by the lack there of it. Now, the second concern with brewing on the Bellman is that it begins sputtering with steam after that first or second shot. Now, if it's sputtering before that, then there is more that we can do in terms of lowering the brew pressure and grinding finer in the basket. But when we start to brew coffee and extract raw material from the grounds, those grinds give up resistance to the water, allowing it to pass more and more easily through the grinds. So beyond about 50 to 80 mils of brewed coffee on the Bellman, you are going to experience an increase in the flow of water out of the adjustable tap. It is a natural occurrence in espresso extraction where the shot speeds up and also other brewing methods. Then add pressure and very hot water and then that's when we start to see steam escaping from the brew tap. Now you can limit the amount of steam sputtering that you do get but it does require low pressure brews under about one bar and then being very diligent in opening and closing that tap to maintain a nice steady flow. And we'll be looking closer at this in just a moment. But from everything I've just mentioned, from dosing the coffee to the water levels, which are our brew ratios, to the crema on the coffee and the actual brewing of the coffee, I guess the summary of all that would be you're not going to be able to brew six perfect espressos with all the crema and no sputter from 20 grams of ground coffee or even 50 grams of ground coffee on the Bellman, as this does go against the very nature of coffee brewing itself. But I am not here to tell you all the bad news, so let's just jump straight in and start brewing with the Bellman so you can see what it's capable of. The first brew method I'll use is going to follow a low pressure brew approach, which you can do on a 15, 30 or 50 gram dose or anywhere in between. And we're only gonna be filling the Bellman up to the three mark with water as I'm aiming for a one to three brew ratio and brewing two cups worth. I like to place hot water in the Bellman to get it up to temperature quickly. It's not a must, but it does help as the Bellman being a pressurized unit, it's not recommended you walk away from it whilst it's on the heat. So with my hot water added, my grounds in the basket and tamped, I place a paper filter on top of that and then close it all down, place it on the stove on a low to medium heat. So from here, the ability to control the temperature of your heat source is important if you do hope to control the brewing accurately. Slow and low though is a good way to start. But if you have a gas stove or the ability as I do to adjust the wattage on your induction top, I would do this. And this will allow you to hold at a temperature and pressure to a certain point. Don't be too concerned if you go over pressure that you're trying to achieve. Because if you do, you can always drop the heat and then open up the steam tap to release the excess pressure. And I would use the steam tap, which doesn't interfere with the brewing process as my second control for managing the pressure. But I would primarily use the heat source for managing the pressure first. So steadily bring the pressure gauge up to 0.5 bars of pressure, get it here and make sure it's holding steady. First, open up that steam tap just quickly again, and this will remove any excess air that was giving you a false pressure reading. Then, with a cup under your tap, open up the brew tap about half a turn. You should hear a light hissing sound of water rising through the bed of coffee. And once you see a couple of drops out of the tap, close it immediately. 
Now, it's important to note that the pressure is still holding at 0.5 bars of pressure, and it shouldn't be rising at all, nor should it be falling. If it is rising too fast, turn down your heat and then open up your steam tap again until you've maintained 0.5 bars. Now, with a couple of drops in your cup, we've started that pre-infusion stage. Give it somewhere between 10 to 30 seconds and slowly rise that temperature on your heat source so you can have the Bellman at 0.8 bars of pressure but not climbing any higher. Once there, open the tap again slowly until you start to see that coffee flowing out. Keep slowly turning in the tap until you have a steady stream. The flame may stop or it might go really fast, in which case you'll need to adjust the tap accordingly. If we're still at 0.8 bars of pressure and holding, this is where you will achieve the most stable brewing of the Bellman. And you can continue to pour coffee out into your cup until you have all that you need. Knowing full well, eventually you'll either use up all the brew water or the coffee will allow for a faster flow and it will start sputtering. So from here, we have all the coffee in one container and we can separate it out evenly into each cup after that as opposed to brewing straight into the cups from the Bellman. And this avoids gradually decreasing strengths of coffee in each cup as you go. Now, this low pressure brew method with the Bellman, it is my preferred brewing method for controlling the flow and getting a good strong cup of coffee, crema aside. There's nothing to say that you can't have a higher pressure than this though with this method of around a one to a one and a half bars. But next, we're gonna brew with two bars of pressure and see how that method differs. For this, I would use a finer grind than normal as the pressure alone will be enough to push water through the coffee quickly without too much resistance. So if you can grind finer, do so here at these higher pressures. Or I would probably just use the low pressure method if you can't grind finer. And I would use the same dose, also sticking to the same brew ratio of a one to three. I'm skipping the pre-infusion stage here and bringing it straight up to two bars of pressure and then holding it there nice and steady. Once there, open the steam tap up a little bit to get rid of any excess of air before closing it again, and then go ahead and open the brew tap to a half to three quarters of a turn to begin brewing. Now, if you've reached your two bars and you have begun brewing, it's a good time to turn the heat off completely, and this will help with a little bit less sputtering later on and it will take a little bit longer to see your brew finally coming out of the tap, but be patient and don't open that tap too much, as the water will slowly work its way through the dose of coffee. But once it begins to flow, stay on that tap completely to keep that flow going. You'll no doubt experience more rapid steam coming out once the coffee grounds give up resistance, so we can limit this sputtering by closing that tap a little bit more in preparation. But once you have all the brew you need, it's much the same as before when it comes to serving with it. Now, if your brew is steaming out much sooner than what's expected, I would say it's either a grind or a dosing issue, generally not a heat issue. But sputtering out is essentially the steam in the Bellman, finding an easy way through the grinds and then causing channeling. So grinding finer will work, but if it doesn't, try coarser and we do need to make sure that that dose of coffee in the basket is nice and flat and even before we place the lid on, and this will help the even density of the coffee for the water to pass through. And that's high pressure brewing with the Bellman unit. I wouldn't necessarily brew at a higher pressure than two bars on it, and I haven't discovered it makes any more of a difference, and in fact, it does become harder to control everything whilst brewing at higher pressures. And if you're already overwhelmed with all that information there, that's totally normal. It's a very similar route to understanding how you get the best from the Bellman, as it is to brewing a regular espresso on an espresso machine and a grinder and there's many variables at play to achieve a good cup of coffee. Practicing getting at least one right will allow you to grow and get better as time goes on. To quickly take a look at the other way of brewing with the Bellman, which is essentially like a mocha pot, is if you have the Bellman all set up on the stove, filled with coffee and water, you basically place it on a medium to high heat with that brew tap open all the way. So as soon as there's any pressure and heat increase in the Bellman, the coffee begins to brew out of the tap. And this makes just as a delicious brew, when you start to pour milk into it, you'll be able to brew more coffee with less sputtering from the Bellman. So I don't see this way of brewing as a compromise to quality coffee, but the strength of this method versus espresso brew ratios is noticeably weaker brews. So you would use more brewed coffee per cup you're drinking with a mocha pot style coffee. 
And lastly, because I haven't mentioned it, steaming milk. I would steam your milk around one and a half to two bars of consistent pressure for best results. Keeping it on the stove on a constant heat is going to steam the milk the best. You could bring it up to three, three and a half bars of pressure and then take it off the stove. But for a jug larger than the 300 to 350 ml jug, you'll notice a decline in pressure at the end. So you won't get a great result using these two off the stove. So having it on the stove while steaming is going to get the best results at around that one and a half to two bars of pressure. Any more than that, it's too powerful. And once you've completed brewing with the Bellman, the best way to decommission it is to place it somewhere safe where you can open up the steam tap, letting out all the pressure inside. Then letting it cool down either on the bench or under a tap before opening it up and removing the coffee grounds and pouring out the rest of that water you didn't use. Give it all a rinse out and a dry before placing it all back together. Now, you can also occasionally just run hot water through the brew. So no coffee, bring it up to the temperature and then run hot water through it as this will help remove any blockages that may be building up over time. And occasionally you will need to replace the seals on the Bellman in order for it to maintain a high pressure and you can find them in the link up above. And that's an in-depth guide into brewing with the Bellman CX25 Espresso and Steamer. If you have any further questions on the Bellman, I'd be happy to answer them. So throw them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon on your screen. And then that way you stay notified when we bring out new videos, just like this every week. Thanks for watching to the end of this video and we'll see you next time.